you have the chance to win a Spring Super Sweeps from Alleist. Donate $60 for one entry to win a brand new Lexus or $25,000 in cash. Check out all the other prizes too when you donate now at alleist.com slash sweeps. Today on the LA Report, why you may see a new charge on your utility bill. Speed cameras are already on their way to several SoCal cities. Now Malibu hopes that they can curb deaths along a stretch of PCH by also putting those cameras in. And later, Earth Day is Monday, but celebrations are happening all over LA today. You can clean up the LA River or plant what's called a seed ball. They work, the flowers come up, we get poppies, we get all kinds of beautiful flowers. We give you a tour around town of ways to help the environment this weekend. It's Saturday, April 20th. I'm Julia Paskin, and that's coming up on the weekend edition of the LA Report from LAist 89.3. But first, here's the latest news. Californians could see a new monthly fee on their electricity bills under a new proposal from state regulators. But in exchange, the rate people pay for electricity would go down slightly. Here is Ben Christopher with our partners at CalMatters. Opponents of this charge, like the group Environment California, they say that this will discourage energy conservation by reducing the rate that you pay for electricity and also punish people who don't consume as much from the grid But then you have other green groups who say that by making it cheaper to consume electricity, you're actually going to be encouraging people to electrify their homes and their cars, which is a major climate goal for the state. The California Public Utilities Commission is set to vote on the proposal early May. The Murrieta Valley Board of Education voted to keep a policy to notify parents when their children change their gender identity. The vote came yesterday, despite a ban by the California Department of Education that finds the practice illegal. Murrieta Valley is among a growing number of school districts in Southern California with such a policy. Chino Valley Unified faces several lawsuits over their notification practice, including one filed by the state attorney general, Rob Bonta. Policy supporters argue that parents have the right to know about their child's lives on campus, opponents say it endangers LGBTQ plus students. A planned metro line through southeast L.A. County is one step closer to becoming a reality. LAist correspondent Leslie Berstein-Rojas has details. This week, Metro's planning committee recommended that the full Metro board approve a final environmental impact report for what's called the Southeast Gateway Line. The light rail line is set to stretch from Artesia to Florence Firestone and eventually to downtown L.A. The Metro board is set to vote next Thursday. A yes vote would clear the way for design and engineering work to start. Among the communities the rail line would serve are Latino-majority cities like Huntington Park, Bell, Cudahy, and Southgate, places where nearby industry and freeways produce poor air quality and where many residents rely on public transit. For LAS 89.3, I'm Leslie Berestein Rojas. You can find out how to make your voice heard about the Southeast Gateway Line at LAist.com. Speed cameras could be on their way to Los Angeles, Long Beach, and Glendale later this year. And now Malibu officials want to add their city to the list. A bill that would allow automated speed tickets just passed a California Senate committee. Much of this is because of a two-mile stretch of Pacific Coast Highway, which has seen dozens of deadly collisions since 2010. We checked in with our partners at CalMatters. Here is Ryan Sabalow. They call it dead man's curve, where they've had in, I think it's like the last 10 years, they've had something like 60 fatal accidents in there. Sembolo says recently four Pepperdine students were killed by a car that police say was going over 100 miles an hour. You almost have a fatal speeding accident on this one stretch of the highway like every few months. And I think they're just really fed up and they're trying to find some way to address it. The legislative effort is being led by Senator Ben Allen of Malibu, who cited a study from the Federal Highway Administration that showed speed cameras reduce traffic fatalities by more than half. All the rain we got in the winter had folks hoping for a wildflower super bloom this spring, but that's not going to happen for the California Poppy Reserve in the Antelope Valley. Park interpreter Callista Turner says that's because non-native plant species have thrived after the winter storms. In an environment like the poppy reserve, when there's extra water, that's when the non-native grasses start to kind of capitalize on that and crowd out everything. She adds that climate change has introduced a degree of uncertainty to forecasting wildflower blooms. Really, we're making predictions, but we're making it off of a lot of historical patterns, and we're finding that those patterns are changing. 
this weekend. And on Earth Day Monday, you can help weed out some of the non-native plants at the Antelope Valley Reserve. More at LAS.com. Japanese cinema and L.A. history collide this weekend with the Art of the Benshi World Tour. L.A.'s Victoria Alejandro has more. The Benshi are narrators who perform alongside Japanese silent films, acting out the story unfolding on the screen. They used to be a common feature of Japanese silent cinema in the early 1900s, including in L.A., says tour organizer Michael Emmerich. It's kind of a part of Little Tokyo history and of Los Angeles history that almost no one knows. Emmerich is hopeful this tour will give folks today a chance to experience that history firsthand. For LAist 89.3, I'm Victoria Alejandro. The Art of the Benshi performs in the Billy Wilder Theater today and Sunday. More information at LAist.com. More after this break. Imagine if you could charge your electric vehicle at the places you already love to eat, shop, and play. Whether you're at the movies, on your weekly grocery trip, or running errands at your local mall, Volta EV charging stations are built around your day-to-day and located in your community and nationwide. All you have to do is check in, plug in, and go about your day. It's EV charging made convenient. Download the Volta app to find your new favorite place to charge. Back now to the L.A. Report, I'm Julia Paskin. Earth Day is Monday, which means this weekend there are lots of opportunities to get into nature and to help the planet. And while it's never a bad time to get out and help clean up trash and save local wildlife species, this weekend's full of celebrations for you to come together with your neighbors and community. Our producer Kevin Tidmarsh has been keeping tabs on what's going on around town, and he's here to talk about it now. Hey, Kevin. Hey, good morning. So uh, what's going on this weekend? Short answer, a lot. Um, so one event that we're going to highlight right now is the nonprofit Friends of the LA River. Um, they're having a cleanup event at the Sepulveda Basin Wildlife Preserve. Um, and I spoke with Candace Dickens Russell. She's the president of Friends of LA River. And she told me something really cool. They're going to have these things called seed balls that they're giving away today. And essentially how that works is you uh, roll up a batch of seeds in some mud that they'll give you, some really high quality mud, and you take them with you and you can plant them anywhere and you can help propagate uh, native species just by, just by dropping them wherever you want, anywhere that there's a spare patch of dirt. Um, here's what she said. It's the best party favor, right? Native seeds. And the flowers that come up, we've had several staff members put them in different areas all around L.A. And they work. They The flowers come up. We get poppies. We get all kinds of beautiful flowers. And so that's something you can literally take with you after this weekend. Friends of L.A. River will also have representatives from the Audubon Society. They're going to be leading nature walks and telling you how to identify native birds, including some endangered ones. And that event's going on from 8 a.m. till noon today. So you can still make it there this morning. OK, what else is going on today? So then several miles downstream on the L.A. River in Atwater Village, the organization L.A. Waterkeeper is going to be hosting a trash cleanup. You'll often see those signs at the beach telling you not to litter to protect the wildlife, but it's just as important to clean up the river farther upstream since that trash will get washed into the ocean. Um, And it'll be interesting to see what volunteers pick up from the river. They typically find all kinds of trash from, you know, the typical stuff you'd expect, like water bottles. And sometimes there's, you know, less orthodox stuff like furniture, fridges. So we'll definitely be keeping tabs on what they're finding um, this morning. That event is happening from 9 a.m. till 11 a.m. today. And I'll actually be there reporting live from that event in just a couple hours. So stay tuned for that. Yes, we'll be having you back in in, uh, two hours exactly from now to hear about that cleanup. So those are some of the more hands-on things that you can do uh, this weekend. What about any Earth Day events that are maybe, I don't know, a little bit more educational? Yeah, lots of chances to do that, too. Um, The Natural History Museum will be having an Earth Day event for the whole family. Um, They currently have a SpongeBob-themed exhibit sponsored by Nickelodeon. So you can learn a little bit more about, you know, what SpongeBob or Mr. Krabs would be like in real life. Um, (laughs) Then the Friends of the LA River will break out their mobile museum, the River Rover, for another event tomorrow in Frogtown. 
And that's appropriate since frogs are one of the native animals you can learn about in their uh, mobile museum. And you can pick up seed balls there too if you didn't make it to their event today. And then for families that are into arts and crafts, the Rediscover Center in Mid-City will be having a crafts fair tomorrow with recycled materials, and they're also giving away free art supplies while they last. So lots and lots of options. Whatever you're into, you can find an Earth Day event to, you know, suit what you want to do. And it's not too late to sign up to volunteer for these events? Yes, yeah. Um, You may have to sign up to some of these events in advance, um, but there's still opportunities to get out there and help clean up the earth, you know, both today and tomorrow, or future weekends too. And we've got a roundup of those volunteer events and the organizations that are putting them on for you at laist.com. That's L-A-I-S-T dot com. That is our producer, Kevin Tidmarsh. Kevin, thanks so much. Thank you so much, Julia. Thanks for listening to the Weekend Edition of the L.A. Report. The Weekend L.A. Report is hosted by me, Julia Paskin, and produced by Monica Bushman and Kevin Tidmarsh. Our engineer is Sean Corey Campbell. The podcast is edited by Fiona Ng. Catherine Mailhouse is the Director of Content Development, and our Vice President of Podcasts is Shana Naomi Crockmall. Join us back here tomorrow. You can read more at LAS.com and listen live on the LAS app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. Listeners like you help make the L.A. Report possible. Please donate at laist.com slash join. This podcast is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. The LAist Spring Super Sweeps is happening now. You can win amazing prizes while supporting your source for local fact-based journalism. One lucky grand prize winner will get to choose a brand new Lexus or $25,000 in cash. Other prizes include an electric bike from Juice Bikes and $1,000 gas gift cards. Your donation of $60 gets you one entry to win. And the more you give, the more entries you get. Donate now at LAist.com slash sweeps.